Hey, what's happening everyone? This is Dealer Destro back with another video review. And for this video, we're gonna be taking a trip down memory lane and we are going to be looking at the Cobra Maggot, a Cobra Command weapon, <laughs> as noted on the box there. Um, so man, where do I start? My review station is kind of small. It was originally only meant to accommodate figures of, you know, this scale, etc. So we're going to navigate this as best as we can here, um, given the limited retail that I'm working with here. So I guess for starters, we will move this bad boy off to the side for a second. And then we can gawk at this lovely box art. This box is one of my favorites. I don't know why. Maybe because it has Crockmaster manning the turret. But I like this artwork. I really, really do. Um, I find this interesting here as well. I'm not sure what that's indicative of. But it looks like they could be... Looks like there's potential collaboration with the Russians or something of that nature. Maybe the, was it the Red Shadows or whatever. I just find that interesting. Um, and as seen here on the box, the, the, the vehicle does separate into three separate units, which makes this, you know, it adds a certain uh, element of interest to the overall item itself. So I guess here's, we'll get the file card out the way there. That's the file card for the Worms, which is the Maggot Driver. One of, probably one of the best uh, vintage figure offerings to date, in my opinion. All right, so let's see how much we can squeeze in here. Uh, it's, that's not too bad. Not too bad at all. All right, so the vehicle, as seen on the box, comes with the driver, uh, the front unit, and the rear unit. Now, for this video, I won't be able to separate. Maybe I will. I don't know. I don't tab. Usually, I don't tab this in because this 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 hooking piece here in the middle has a tendency to break. I've got three of these and luckily all of them are still intact, but the reason for it is I never, yeah, we should be able to separate because I never fully clamped down on this front piece, which makes separation into all three uh, vehicles fairly simple. So I guess for starters, we can take a look at the driver, maybe, depending on how the camera acts. Um, again, one of the best vintage figure offerings to date in my opinion I mean the details on this guy are crazy like he's got the insignia the medals the skull belt buckle the paint apps on the shoulders the helmets clean that Cobra logo is applied very well I want to say this comes off yeah so the helmet comes off and reveals a faceless trooper. He's got some sculpting in his mask there, and I mean, they really didn't have to like do that, but for, I mean, for back in the day, for when this came out, I mean, this set a new precedent. I mean, look at this, like, the paint on the figure, you got a sculpted knife, sculpted pistol with a holster, and don't get me wrong, for this era, this kind of stuff flew. Like, if they we were to ever see an updated figure on, on this guy, you know, I would want this piece to like be free floating, this would have to be functional, this would have to be functional. But for when this came out, this still sets a pretty high bar, in my opinion. And that's that's this particular figure. So not all of them hold up well for the test of time, I should say. So for the actual vehicle itself, it does, it does roll, the treads are non-functioning, and it rolls via those mechanisms underneath there. And then this piece uh, pops right out the back. These legs fold down. 
like so. And what you have here, when it's all said and done, is a standalone, fully functional battle turret, which is pretty cool. And if we look in here, I mean, some of the detailing in here is just amazing considering when this thing came out. So you've got, a, you've got a cockpit, you've got a control panel, you have little dials, knobs, bells, and whistles, all sorts of stuff in here. Um, and it's, it's pretty amazing. And then the diamond-plated kind of mesh metal finish on here, spectacular. Uh, turning it around, you've got a monitor. I mean, the, there was just so much love given to this brand back in the day. A uh, chair accommodates an extra trooper. Not sure what this is. Maybe this is to position the, the turret up and down. I don't know. But, and then you have these like fuel tank things here. I don't know, just the, the brand, the love that the brand received during its heyday. I mean, it's still somewhat unprecedented. I mean, and... Then you got these two guys here, and they separate into their, oh, their respective units. And then what you could do is you could take your worms, and you could set them in there. No problems, right? Um, and this, I mean, this unit's pretty self-explanatory you got your laser cannon um, it's on a swivel here you've got the radar dish I'm not gonna mess with it because those things are really finicky you've got this front laser here that's on a you know it moves left and right um, so yeah so that's the front unit and you've got oh, that thing's not gonna give is it so usually this thing would pop right off and you'd see some uh, you know, some additional detailing underneath here. I'm not going to mess with it too much because, the again, the age of the plastic, etc., is pretty brittle. Um, and there's a high risk that I'm going to end up snapping something off. But rest assured, there are additional details under here. Again, I don't never, I don't ever fully clamp this shut so I could kind of lift up on it to get the, the rear piece out. And one of the problem points of this vehicle is this wasn't really thought through. This is kind of a harder plastic and they want you to they want you to separate the two. So what ends up often happening is these snap and then it makes the combining gimmick just, you know, fail. Anyway, this is a rear the rear second half of the vehicle separate and in the back here you have this beautiful detailing. You have this monitor uh, I'm gonna say maybe that's a power supply. You have this console here. You've got all these. You got these dials. You've got a, like a keyboard. Uh, you got a place you could put your beer. You know what I mean? Like there's. I mean, look at the detailing in the floor and flooring there. You got your your peg. So what you could do is if you had like a televiper or whatnot, you know, you could peg him in and have him literally manning this 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 controls on this unit here um, so yeah so <laughs> I think that for when this came out I want to say let me I'm looking at the box here I want to say this was maybe like a early 90s late 80s uh, vehicle um, so yeah so I just <laughs> For when this came out, this this set a new precedent. I mean, look look at the look at the detailing here and here and here. Like, I just don't get like how G.I. Joe can't succeed in today's day and age. Like, I, I really, I just, I don't get it. It, it kind of irks me. Like, seeing how we went from this to 
no vehicle offerings, constant repainted figures, yada, yada, yada. Um, I mean, and I guess we all know why, but it's just frustrating because, you know, you had, you had this, this awesome stuff and it's just like, it just seems like Joe got left in the yesteryears and it just, they never picked it back up yet. You know, Transformers has a huge fan base. It continues to succeed. And I, I mean, I, I guess it's because it has a medium too, right? There's always like a running cartoon. There's a, there's movies, etc. I just, I, I know that, you know, Hasbro combined the universes and whatnot, but I mean, until they figure it out and they start showing this, I mean, this brand has the recipe for success. Oddballness of this vehicle aside, wonky yellow 90s coloring aside, I mean, if they redid this in like a camo deco, maybe like a red and black digital camo or something, I mean, this, this can succeed. There's still a place for stuff like this, at least in my heart of hearts. Um, and I, I don't know. We could debate all day long, um, and I'm, I'm going off on a tangent here, so, and I'm kind of battling a cold, so I apologize if uh, I sound a little congested or anything, but is this vehicle, like, if you're new into the Joe collecting scene and you don't have a lot of vintage stuff, if you're at a show, you can still pick the, you can find these with the box for, man, I want to say, I want to say I picked this up for like 35 bucks with the driver, with the box. Now, mind you, mind you, um, I'm looking at the box here. Um, the price point rubbed off, but I want to say this thing probably retailed anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks new. And I have a second box floating around, so maybe that one still has the price point on it. But, I mean, regardless, you know, it uh, it can be done. I mean, I, I still think there's a place for stuff like this in today's uh, modern era-esque G.I. Joe run. I really do. I hope Hasbro figures it out. I hope they bring back vehicles. I hope they bring back play sets. I hope they bring all that stuff back. Because, man, we are in a drought. Anyway, so for those of y'all that haven't had a chance to see the maggot or, you know, see one in good detailing, I hope this video is uh, useful for you and, you you, you know, it's uh, it, that it's informative. Um, if you're on the fence about picking one of these up or you just haven't picked one up, highly recommend it. The fun factor of this vehicle is off the charts. Um, it looks great in dioramas. The, the vehicle driver for when it came out, I mean, it is... This guy here, he is, he is an amazing figure, still by today's standards. And I don't even collect O-ring really anymore. Um, so yeah, so there's that. So until next time, folks, I uh, hope you guys take care. Thanks for watching the videos. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe because we got a lot more coming down. Um, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side. Thanks a lot.